This is a model of a right knee from the front, with all the muscles removed. At the top, here you'll see the tendon of your quadriceps muscles. Encased in this tendon is your kneecap, or your patella. If you take it off and look underneath, you'll see the lower part of your femur, which turns into two rounded segments called your femoral condyles. These sit on top of your tibial plateau to form the major hinge part of your knee. Your knee is held together by four major ligaments, your LCL on the outside and your MCL on the inside. These help protect against lateral forces or blows to help hold your knee together. If you turn the knee around and look inside, you'll see there's two ligaments called your cruciate ligaments, or your ACL and your PCL. These help resist against torsioning forces and forward back movements. If you open your knee up and look inside, you'll see two cartilage cups called your meniscus, your medial meniscus and your lateral meniscus. These act as shock absorbers and provide some stability for the femoral condyles on the knee joint. As you'll notice in the videos, there are different ways I can move to accomplish the same basic task. The first one is a squat, while the second one is pushing off sideways from a half squat. Your knee is a big hinge joint that is built to flex and extend, which puts it at the mercy of your hips and ankles. Your hips and ankles are built to move in all different directions, so if they end up getting either really stiff or become more flexible than you have the awareness to control, you inevitably beat up on your knees due to poor movement patterns. The strength in your legs and the flexibility of your joints play a huge part in both how you move and how much your knees will like you while you move. The goal of lower body movements is learning how to load weight through your foot, ankle, knee, and hip in a controlled manner. When you don't control it well, it is typically the knees and the low back that feel the pain. You will see here in the example of good leg loading, the leg supports the body weight well as it pushes the body sideways. Whereas in the example of poor leg loading, you'll see the body weight gives into the knee as the body pushes sideways. This is a prime example of how knees get beat up on due to poor leg strength and control. Your kneecap is encased in the tendons of your quadricep muscles. There's four muscles of your thigh that will tug on the front of your kneecap. There's a muscle that runs up to the front of your thigh here, muscle that pulls it off to the side, muscle that will pull it more to the middle. And then you also have your IT band that will attach here and run up to the side of your hip here, and then your sartorius muscle that will cross across the front of the leg and down into the mid joint line of the knee. As well you have your groin muscles that can extend all the way down into the center of your knee. If you develop an imbalance between these muscles it can tug on your kneecap and create anterior knee pain. Your hamstrings are the major muscle group on the back of your thigh that very much affect your knee. There are three of these muscles. One inserts on the outer aspect of your knee, while the other two insert more to the medial aspect of your knee. All three of these muscles run up the back of your leg and originate on your sits bone, which if you take your glute off and look underneath, is the deep bone in your butt that you sit on. There's also a ligament from this bone towards your tailbone, which is part of the attachment. Also important are your groin muscles or your adductors. These will play a role in the function of your knee as well. Patellofemoral syndrome, or PFS, is a general term for pain around the front of the knee. This is not a condition that you catch or acquire. It is purely a mechanical irritation of the kneecap due to a muscle imbalance in the hip and thigh combined with poor posture and movement control. The most common cause of PFS is a muscular restriction deep in the hip that creates tension in the thigh muscles that then tug on the kneecap. This is your gluteus maximus. If you take that off and look underneath, you will find a number of deep hip rotator muscles. Tension in these muscles will affect the mobility of your hip, as you can see in the video. When you place your foot in this position, the knee should fall outward towards the floor. 
but muscle tension can restrict this movement. If you compare your right side to your left side, both hips should have equal amount of movement. When one side is restricted and won't fall towards the floor, it can make you very prone to PFS. This restriction tends to create a lot of tension in the IT band and results in mechanical irritation of the kneecap with repeated movements. The absence of this type of restriction and the presence of chronic anterior knee pain usually points to more of a postural issue where the person simply overuses their thigh and back muscles during movement with very little recruitment of the hamstrings. This is very common in teenage female athletes and makes them very prone to anterior knee pain and ligament damage in their knees. Plant and twist movements and direct blows to the knee can significantly sprain the ligaments in the joint and possibly tear the meniscus. The most common ligaments to sprain are your MCL and your ACL. These are the ligaments in the middle part of your knee and the inside of the joint. When you sprain a ligament, it is classified as a grade 1, 2, or 3 sprain, which correlates to minor, moderate, and complete tears. Grade 3 tears typically require reconstructive surgery, whereas grade 1 and 2 tears can heal themselves in 4 to 6 weeks. The other major structure that is commonly torn in your knee is your meniscus. This is a cartilage cup that acts as a shock absorber in the knee. Tears of this tissue can also require surgical repair, as the tissue doesn't have adequate blood supply to heal itself. If you are not nice to your knees throughout life, they start being not nice to you as you get older. Combinations of poor mechanics, a torn meniscus, joint sprains, and arthroscopic surgeries eventually lead to a breakdown of the knee cartilage and the development of bone spurs in the knee. It can turn from a smooth gliding strong hinge to a gravel filled painful joint that your body will compensate for. Once your knee has developed moderate to advanced osteoarthritis, the best thing you can do is modify your activities to accommodate the knee and become aware of just how much it is affecting your movement. Degenerated knees tend to tighten up most of the muscles in your leg, hip, and calf, resulting in both pain and restricted movement. These altered movements can lead to breakdown of the hip and low back as well. So just because you may have a high pain tolerance and can push through the discomfort of a bad knee, it doesn't mean you should. Conservative treatments like IMS acupuncture and controlled strengthening exercises can prolong the functional use of your knee, but in the long run you will likely have to have a total knee replacement to correct the problem. Too many people wait until they are 70 years old to replace their knee that has been severely arthritic for 15 years. If your knee has advanced osteoarthritis and is significantly affecting your mobility, I believe you should have it replaced while you're at an age that you can use it, if for nothing else but to protect the rest of your body from it.